and um, welcome to Pyrex, who's joining us this morning, Tribe yeah, Pyrex, and man. Tribe Ramsuch, and Ooh. any family or friends that may be watching, um, welcome to the tribe as it is <laughs> these days. So, yeah. yeah, it's really good to be able to share with you this morning what God's put on our hearts. Yeah. Stu and I are going to be doing a little bit of a tag team. It's good. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Okay. <laughs> good. But we want to just start off praying for you guys and just praying for this time. I really feel it's going to be such an encouraging word and an invitation to, to maturity. And we spoke about that last week. Pares, um, Tennis and Santi uh, did a great job. We didn't uh, share notes, but it was the same thing. And so it's exciting for us to, to just encourage you in this time. Uh, that what uh, you know what God's doing in our hearts and we respond appropriately so let's just pray and uh, we're with you in your lounge wherever you are just pray with us and invite Holy Spirit to come with power that there'll be such an anointing yeah. uh, on this morning's message that we would be transformed by it. we don't just want to hear yeah. information but we want to be transformed by that yeah. so yeah Father yeah. we just thank you just for your presence this yeah. morning we invite you into this space we ask Holy Spirit that you would touch every heart, every ear, every mind. Lord, I pray that you would anoint Jen and I with words that would come from your heart with power and authority to establish the kingdom in us and through us. God, so we just welcome you. We welcome your presence. We love you. You're amazing, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for lives being transformed. Wow, God, you, you're you. not in lockdown. Thank you. I was yeah. just going to say Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're not in lockdown. Come you on. are not Ooh. limited. You're everywhere. You are yeah. all over. On, Lord, nothing can tie you down. And I thank you, Lord, that right now that you just minister to your hearts, <laughs> Lord. Yeah. Right now that the yes, fire of God will come, come on, on just, to hearts, yeah. Lord. I just pray that, the that the yeah, joy on, of the Jesus. Lord will be released <laughs> into hearts Woo. in Jesus' name. Yeah, Lord, yeah, that you would on. encourage your people, you would strengthen yes, your people, God, yes, you would Lord. lift them up, God, yes, and Lord. you just make your presence known, make your presence known in come their on. hearts, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, you are awesome. You're our life. You're our fire. You're our strength. We just yeah. love you. Come on. And we just, yeah, we just honor you. We honor you, Lord, King mm. of kings and Lord of lords. So. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Take your own. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had this um, analogy that I wanted to share with you, and it starts off with a story. I love stories. I don't know about you, but this is a story about a movie. I'm not going to tell you the title. If you've watched it, you will know exactly what movie I'm talking about. If you haven't, I won't spoil it for you because you won't know which one. So it's a story about a, a, a lovely young woman and she is in love with a very handsome and a very well-educated, high society, very ambitious young man who's climbing the, the, the societal ladder. And yes, so she falls in love with him, but he's just not popping the question to ask her to marry him. And she really wants to get married and she's already got this this future mapped out in her mind of the two of them together, you know, dreaming, fairy tales and everything. And she, this whole romance takes her on a strange adventure to another country where she meets a tall, dark stranger. And he puts a thought into her, her heart. And the question that he asks her is this. He says, if there's a fire in your home and you've got like, say, 60 seconds to just grab whatever's really important to you, what do you take? And that got her thinking about what's really important in her life. And he said, that's the way that would reveal what's really in somebody's heart. Is if, what do they run for in, in, a, in a fire? You know, you've got a few seconds to get out of your house. So anyway, so she ends up having her moment when this young man that she loves proposes to her and everything is now going according to her plan. And they've got this great apartment that they're going to move into together. It's exactly what they wanted. All the high society friends are there and they're having a cocktail party. And she gets this thought in her mind about just checking for one last time to make sure that she really is the love of this man's life. And it's not other things that are, you know, more important to him. So secretly she goes off and she sets off the fire alarm. And everybody stops and they're like, goodness, what's happening? And they're all rushing out into the streets. And um, But she's just watching her fiancé to see what he does. And he runs straight for the laptop and he starts bundling cell phones. And, and he shouts to her, just make sure you've got this and make sure you've got that. And you can just see the sadness on her face when she realizes that she's actually not 
the treasure in his heart. But it's all these other things. And it's just such a picture to me of the situation that we're actually in right now. And um, I wrote, I see this as an analogy for where we're at. And I think that a fire alarm has gone off. And it's left us facing the questions of where our hearts are really at. And what's really important to us? What is surface in this time, in this moment of, wow, you know, this is a really, really, like a serious moment we're facing in the history of the world. And it's like, what's really important to our hearts? And it's, it reminds me of people that are panning for gold and all the fine sands are through, the, the nuggets are left behind, and those are the things that really, really matter. And that ties in with that scripture in Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 3. And Paul is speaking to the church of Corinth and he says to them, um, you know, no other foundation can be laid other than what's already been laid. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation of every single believer and should be the foundation of every single human being. But we should take care of how we build on that foundation. And you can read about it in 1 Corinthians 3 from 11 onwards um yeah it's in there you'll find it and the story is though he says that you should be, take care of how you build because there will come a day when the work that you've the things that you've built with whether it's whether it's gold silver or precious stones or or straw or hay or things that can burn up in fire and be destroyed they all our works will be tested by fire and what remains is that will be our reward, we'll be rewarded for. And I just think that in this time, we've actually had the opportunity for 2020 vision, where we can see clearly the things that are important, the things that really matter in the, in the light of an eternal perspective, um, how important our faith is, the things that can't be shaken that have been revealed to our hearts. And I think now it's, it's actually to take note cognitively and to be conscious and aware in our hearts of the things that are really valuable, the, the nuggets of gold that can't be um, destroyed in a fiery trial, and to take those things and build our lives going forward on the things that really, really matter. So that was my encouragement to you this morning. Um, and I really trust that God will speak to your hearts through it and well, just for us to be mindful as we, as we move ahead into the new season of what the goal is and to build our lives with things that don't you know perish by fire so with that i'm going to tag Stu and um thanks for listening and please um keep commenting love to hear from you absolutely thanks jen i trust that you've been encouraged by that especially in the season and, and i think what jen is speaking about is is that our hearts get revealed um i found this last week shoot by the previous week seemed to be a blur and a mess of just time and it wasn't sure if it was Thursday, Friday or Sunday, Wednesday. You know, it was just it was just like this blur of day. This week has gone by quickly. Maybe we were expecting the lockdown to be lifted, but we're in this process. Irrespective of all of that, God is working. He really is working in our hearts. And as Jen was saying, we, we are in this like trial, fire test run to see what's in our hearts. So yeah. Here is the key. It takes a lot of humility to be honest with what's in your heart. It takes a lot of humility to say, God, would you speak to me? Because I don't want to go into this new season, transition into a new space with the old thinking or with the old things that have kept me clogged in my heart or maybe values and visions that I wanted. But actually, God, they're really not what you want. And so I, I want to encourage you to to almost let that scenario be your scenario and say, what has been your worry? The reality is, economically, there are worries. Uh, jobs may be under question, uh, salaries may be being cut, lost. Those are realities. But what's in your heart is going to come out. And I want to tell you what God loves. He loves faith because faith's the only way to please Him. So I want to encourage you with that scripture, because I was going to read 1 um, Corinthians 3, but I want to read another scripture to you, and it's in Peter chapter 1. And, and Peter writes, and he says this, just verse 6 of 1 Peter 1. He says, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Wow. How's that? Friends, God loves you and He allows trials to test us. He's not the author of them, but He works with us in a trial. We surely are in a trial. All kinds of things are happening. And there's fire, pressure. There, there's things that are happening not in our control. But what it does is it reveals what's in our hearts. So I want to say a couple of things here. Is when you are being refined by the Father who loves you and me, He is wanting to remove the dross. That's why gold, precious uh, silver goes through fire. Because it actually melts and then the, the impurities, the dross is what they call it, comes to the surface and then the refiner removes that. And, and I've heard that a, a, like a master refiner, he knows when the gold or the silver is pure. And that's when he can see his reflection in it. And I think that's amazing. So when we're going through trials and testing and, and our hearts get exposed and dross comes up, God's not upset. He's not angry with you now. He wants the dross to come up so he can remove the dross and he can make our faith purer, our hearts purer. That's what he's doing. Why? Because he's seeing his reflection in us. I've never ever heard of a goldsmith who when put gold into fire and sees dross come up, throw the gold away. No, he throws the dross away. God is so committed to you and I and our purity that he keeps allowing these moments to bring out the dross in us, to remove the dross so we become purer in our faith. Because you see, our faith is more precious than gold and silver. That's what's happening. James even tells us, he says, you must rejoice when you go through various testings. Wow, uh, you kind of think that's such a different perspective. It's such a different mindset. Why would James encourage us to rejoice? You know why? Because God's with us. God is bigger than the trial. He's bigger than the moment of what's happening around us in the world. And he's working in you and I. Friends, that's the key. If we forget that God is at work in us, we must probably going to start thinking naturally. Our fears are going to arise. Our own mindset's going to come in. The environment around us is going to set the agenda of our hearts. And we're going to maybe start wondering, where is God? How long is this going to last? Why is God allowing this? I want to encourage you this morning with words that, that would mature us. Wow, God's not the author of sickness. He's not the author of any of this. But the pressure, the pressure of what's happening, the economic pressure, the, the lack of freedom to move, the uncertainty of tomorrow, God surely is involved. And the trials, the testing of our heart right now, God is at work to cause our hearts to become pure, to become absolutely a reflection of Him. And so He's committed. Friends, He's committed to you and I. That's why I think James says, consider pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you go through various trials. Why? God is working. Don't think anything else. Think this. Wow, God, this trial is revealing something in my heart. Now humility is key. Lord, I, I, I realize that I'm fearful. I realize that I'm worried. I realize, Lord, that I have such a value in money. But Lord, it seems like I'm going to lose some of this, but I trust you. We actually repent. The word repent means metanoia, to change the way you think. You see, this is what Jesus proclaimed when he began his ministry. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He says, think differently because I'm here. <laughs> Religion makes you think one way. The world makes you think another way. But I want to encourage you to think differently because my kingdom, my rulership is here. And you know, God's not just wanting you and I to get saved and say, well, great. We got fire insurance. Uh, when we die, we're going to heaven. No, he wants us to operate in the kingdom. He wants us to be those who reflect him to a world that desperately needs Jesus. He wants us to be mature. So I, I want to go back to what Jane was reading in 1 Corinthians. And, and it's so important for us to have a look at that scripture because, because I think God is giving us little moments on our journey of fire and testing that builds character. It helps us to, in humility, to say, Lord, thank you that I can get rid of the dross. I don't want to, I don't want to hide it. I don't want to pretend it's not there. I want to be honest and say, God, I'm fearful. Or God, I, I realize that I have placed my value in things. Some of us may be coming into the season, we're exceptionally busy. I think I said last week. And all of a sudden, all of that busyness is gone. Can't do sport, can't meet, can't do all your stuff. You're at home. Maybe you, you are doing essential services and you do go to work. But friends, as all of that is settled, like Jen says, when all the fire alarms are going off, what's important? And he has a beautiful invitation from the Father to humble our hearts and to repent, think differently, especially as believers, and say, God, I want you to be first. I want to seek your kingdom. 
I don't want the busyness of a world that nothing wrong with doing all those things, but that clouds my heart. And what happens is you become an afterthought. You become an addition instead of you, Lord, being my life. You're the reason I live and that my faith pleases you, that I get led by you. Jesus said to his disciples in John 4, 34, he, talking to the woman at the well, they go to get food. They come back and they're insisting on him eating food because obviously, you know, they, they love Jesus and they want Jesus to eat something. And he makes a statement. He says, John 4, 34, he says, my food is to do the will of my father and to complete what he sent me to do. And they're like, like us, dear, caught in headlights, uh, who brought you food? That, that's what they thought. Who, who brought food? Who brought him a meal? And actually he was saying this, guys, eating food naturally sustains your natural body. But if you want to be sustained spiritually, you've got to do the will of the Father. And that's how I love this time is that maybe, maybe we've had a, a blend, an intertwining of what we want and what God wants. And I want to tell you, God's will is perfect. God's will for you is perfect. His plans for you are perfect. But we need to say, Lord, I want your plans. I want to give up what I want. I want what you want. And then he says something just after that, talking around the, the harvest field, because then he saw the crowd coming from the town. And he said to his disciples, he says, um, you'll say maybe four months until harvest. But I want to tell you, look, because the harvest fields are white for harvesting. Well, they, they're ripe for it. They, they're white. That means they're ready to be harvested. And then he says, store up for yourselves treasures by harvesting right now. He's talking about souls. And I, I'm challenged. I'm challenged as the church as tribe, parais, tribe ramsach. You know what God's heart is and His will is? That everybody gets saved. It doesn't mean everybody's going to receive grace, but His will is that everybody gets saved. And I'm starting to say, God, make that my will, that I want to enter into your will to see people getting saved. That's my Father's business. And as a mature son, I want to be about my Father's will. Jesus showed us what that looked like. I don't want my dad who can do everything, who's got everything, be you know a provider of a, some spilled bread called Stuart and my ministry and what I want. No, friends, I want to grow up and say, God, what is your will? And I want to enter into that world because I want to tell you that is going to nourish us spiritually. That's going to strengthen us when we're doing the will of the Father. And so Father's will is that we disciple people, that we ourselves are being discipled, that we're following folks who are following Jesus and encouraging people to follow us as we follow Jesus. I think we're in a season, friends, where, where, where people are, are scared and unsafe people. You might be watching today and you, you know God, but, but your heart, you realize, I don't know if I die, I'm going to go to heaven. Well, this message can apply for you as well. Receive. That's the will of God. Receive His free gift of salvation. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. You just get it. So I want to ask you to receive it today. What we do with the receiving of that gift, friends, is that we follow Jesus. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to mature, to grow in our faith and in the knowledge of who He is. He does not want us to be spoiled brats in the Father's house. He loves us. We're going to go to heaven. But friends, this is the very thing that Jane was speaking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The invitation is that you and I must be careful how we build. So, in closing, I just want to quickly go through that again. And it says this now, verse 12, If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. Now that day is a big D, capital D, so there is a day that we're all going to give, but there are little days in between now and then that God uses fire to, to help us to make the choices. So there will be a day that will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burnt up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through the fire. Wow. Friends, again, as we close, there's fire happening around us. It's not the day, it's a day. It's a season. And it's a season that God wants us to come through so we can actually leave behind the things that limited us in the previous season. We spoke about entering into the promised land. I don't want to walk around the desert for another 40 years. I want to enter into the promises. So God's inviting us to think differently. Think will of God. You see, that, that actually, Lord, my will versus your will. I don't want my will. I want your will. It takes humility to say, actually, God, I don't want to get busy doing things that, that aren't bad, but they're not your will. They, get, they, they become distractions. They, they, they pull my affections away. 
Lord, I want your will for my life. And I want my life to count for eternity. I want to be involved with things that when it comes to the fire are going to be gold, silver, and precious stones. Things of eternal value. Not would they in short temporary. And then when one day, oh, I, I got this medal at that sport. I, I did this. I, I went on that camping trip. I, I enjoyed that holiday. Would hay and straw, friends. Would hay and straw. Am I against camping and sport? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. But if that's what I'm working my life for, so I can have a great holiday and, and I can feel good with all my sporting achievements, all my achievements. Friends, that's wood, hay and straw. But if I realize, Lord, I love you. You love me. You've saved me. I'm in your family. I'm a son in the family business. To see your will being done. Well, maturity now says, I want to align my thinking with yours. So I want to pray for us in closing. Just that that our mindset would be undone and aligned with heaven. And that we would have a humble heart to say, God, in this new season, in this transition, I pray for an anointing to break off me the, 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 the ropes, the wood, hay, and straw. Lord, what I'm seeing, maybe my own heart, I'm realizing there's a lot of wood, hay, and straw. That's okay. You can actually today choose to say, Lord, I'm going to build with gold, silver, precious stones, things of value. Your will is always gold, silver, and precious stones. Always. I want to do your will first. I want to seek your kingdom first. So I'd like to pray for you as you're sitting there um, in your lounge, you know, maybe you're even watching in bed. Uh, next week, maybe I'll preach from my bed. No, I'm just joking. But just to pray with you. And, and would, you, would you humble your heart? Uh, that's why there's no condemnation. There's no, there's no pointing fingers. Uh, I realize for, for myself, I'm saying, God, I don't want to go into the season with the old thinking. The, the, this new season requires new thinking. And I want to grow up. I really do. I want to grow up to be everything you want for me. My heart completely surrendered. So, Father, right now, Lord, I just thank you for everybody watching, listening. Lord, maybe there has been some uh, pricking of the heart by your spirit, some, some s- sense of, Lord, I, I've actually got some wood, hay, and straw that I've been building, but I see it's burning. I see it's crumbling. I, I, it's, it's crumbling to nothing. Lord, I want to ask you to forgive me. N- not because you've ever held anything against me, because you dealt with that on the cross, but I want you to forgive me for living for me and, and building wrong. You love me. You're so precious. You're so, so kind to, to let me go through a, a little trial, a little testing to show what's in my heart. So God, if there is dross in my heart, in this season, would you remove it? Would you come and remove it with your kind hand in the fire? I don't want my heart to get hardened and keep the dross in it. I want it to be, I want it to be tender. I want it to be completely vulnerable in your presence. And ask God that you remove all the dross. So Holy Spirit, right now, would you just come with fire, with purity, with love, with tenderness, with compassion, and just work in all of our hearts, God. We want to be about the Father's business. We want to be like Jesus. We're not doing what we want to do. We want to do what you want to do. We want your heart to be our hearts. Father, if there's anybody watching that's not born again, Lord, my deep desire, God, if you say the harvest field is ready, it's ripe, it's Lord, help us to see that, 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 that you want to see people getting saved, included into your family, to grow up as sons and daughters, to carry on the Father's business. And if that's you, then I ask you, just pray this with me. Just say, Father God, I've, I've run my own life. I've, I've never received the free gift of eternal life, salvation that you paid for on the cross. But I'm going to receive it right now. I'm humbling my heart. I'm going to receive it. I don't deserve it, but I receive it as a gift. Please forgive me for my sin of unbelief. And I thank you, God, that today that you come in. Not a theology. I'm not praying a prayer. I'm inviting a person into my heart. Lord, that you'd come and make me a brand new person. You'd cause me to be born again of the Spirit. And that I'd be a new creation from today onwards, never to be the same. And that today I choose to follow you. Thank you, God. Just allow him to come and wash you. He washes you clean of all your sins. Oh, all your sins washed, paid for, completely full. No more anger from the Father. He's already dealt with that. And that you can say, Lord, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. Thank you. And uh, lead me, Holy Spirit, in, in these days. Lead me to, to know what to do. Read his word. Get together with fellowship. Um, maybe if you're watching, leave a comment. Uh, I know that all through this time this morning, you've been able to comment and we've been able to interact with you. It's the best we can do with this situation. It'll be so much easier just to, to be together. But thank you for being with us. If there are any prayer requests, put them out there. We'd love to pray with you. And uh, we trust in God. Tribe, we trust in God for his inheritance. But for us to receive it, he wants to give it to mature sons and daughters. 
who are going to push aside childish thinking, childish things, and allow him in this fire to reveal our hearts so beautifully so we can remove the dross, so we can have a reflection of the Father in us. So God bless you. Thanks for being with us this morning. We love and appreciate every single one of you. Uh, thank you to Tennis and Santi in Paris doing a great job uh, under all the pressure that you are. Let's keep praying for each other. Pray for uh, your leaders. Pray for Jen and I. Pray for Tennis and Santi. Uh, let's pray for one another that we're going to respond, come out of this looking more like Jesus, freer than ever before, to go into all that God has for us. God bless you.